Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new release of LaunchBox on Android. If you're not familiar with LaunchBox and BigBox, basically what we have here is an emulation front end. It was mainly designed for Windows, and now they've brought it over to Android. Well, it was actually released on Android a while ago, and then development on that kind of fell off, but the new version is out with a lot of new features, and this is super easy to set up, and it looks absolutely amazing. As you can see here, we have a totally new interface. We have the wheels, and it automatically downloads box art. It's really easy to set up, and I'm going to go over that in just a second. But before we get started here, I do want to mention that this is not available on Google Play. You will have to head over to the official LaunchBox website. There's a premium version, and there's a free version. The free version allows up to 100 games to be imported, so you can test it out. And then, if this is something you like and you're going to use, you can always purchase the premium version. But uh, in this video, we're just going to take a look at how this works. Then I want to go over installing it and setting up your first emulator. So with LaunchBox on Android, at the time of making this video, it doesn't contain any emulators or games, but you can basically use any emulator you like. So, you know, if there's a certain N64 emulator you like that works with Android, you can easily set it up to start your games from LaunchBox and play them with said emulator. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get it installed. I'm also going to show you how to set it up. Then we'll do a little bit of a walkthrough on the features built in. And uh, by the end of this, you should have this up and running on your Android device. Alright, so before we get started here, there's a few things to know. While you're on your Android device, I just happen to be on a Galaxy Tab S7, you can use LaunchBox and import everything directly on the device. But if you have the Windows version of LaunchBox, there's an easy export to Android option built into the latest versions. And basically what you'll do there is just export what games you want to be on your Android device. It's going to package it up all nice and neat. And then you can transfer that to your device. It's going to download the artwork on your PC and everything like that. And it'll be set up for LaunchBox on Android. But if you just want to set everything up on your Android device, it's very easy to do. And we're going to walk through that right now. First things first, like I mentioned, LaunchBox doesn't contain any emulators, so you will have to choose which ones you want to use. Uh, for most of my stuff, like NES, SNES, uh, Game Boy Advance, I use RetroArch for PSP, it's PPSSPP, but once we get an Android set up, it gives you a nice little explanation. Next thing you're going to want, if you're setting everything up on your Android device, is a file manager, and you're also going to need your games. I store mine on a micro SD card in a folder called ROMs, it just makes it a lot easier to get to. And I have the stuff I'm going to be importing right here, just in their separate folders. So let's go ahead and get LaunchBox installed. There's a link in the description to the LaunchBox website. We're going to choose Download Now on the Android version. We're going to put in our email. It's going to send us a link to our email. Once that link comes in, we're going to go ahead and open up our email directly on our device, or you can transfer it from your PC on over. And we're just going to download here. Download it. Now that it's downloaded, I'm just going to open up a files application. We'll find that APK. I'm going to install it. It might prompt you to allow access from whatever app you're using. Just follow the on-screen prompts. Now we have LaunchBox installed. We can open it from here. Or we can go ahead and place it on our desktop. That's exactly what I'm going to do. That way I have easy access. We're going to go ahead and start it up for the first time. We're going to go ahead and allow access. And from the main menu, we're going to have a section called Android. This is just all of our Android games and apps. This is known as the banner theme. Up in the top right hand corner, the three little dots, we can actually change view. And from here, we can go to basic text, text list with details, or wheel with details. I don't have any other systems installed here, so it's not a long list. But personally, I like the banner, so I'm going to go back to that. And now that we have LaunchBox up and running, it's time to import our first set of games. So from the top left hand corner, the three little lines, import games, folder of games to import. We want to choose the folder where we have our ROMs located. Mine are on my SD card in a folder called ROMs. And I'm just going to go ahead and go with N64. We'll do that first. I'm going to select this folder. Next on the list, platform for imported games. It should automatically detect it, but if not, you can choose it from here. You can manually select it. Region to prioritize. I'm going to leave mine at North America. Combine ROMs with matching titles into a single game. I want to leave this checked. Import games from subfolders of the selected folder. If you have a bunch of different folders with ROMs in them, you might want to leave this checked. Uh, usually I just leave it off, but it's really up to you. Use folder names instead of ROM names. Use MAME metadata. If you're importing MAME games, Arcade, FBA, Neo Geo, I would definitely check this. 
And finally here in the import settings, force duplicate games. I'm going to leave this off. I just want a single game. If I have two of them in there, I don't want them both taking up space. I'm going to proceed with import. It's going to parse my games. It's going to scan that folder, find all of my ROMs. They're right here. And I'll choose proceed. My games are now imported. That was actually pretty quick, but the reason it was quick is because it's only downloading the metadata right now. It actually downloads the box art in the background. And if I go into my N64 section, we'll notice that uh, some of the stuff isn't downloaded yet. It's downloading in the background. So my box art isn't, there it goes. It automatically downloaded it for me. It takes a second and I have a ton of games here. But if you want to manually download all of the media at one time, we can go up to the three little dots in the top right hand corner download all missing media and we can do it from here but personally i just kind of like it doing it in the background so after a little while it'll have all of my clear logos and box art downloaded automatically for me we can also change the view here personally i like the wheel style but uh right now we can go to change view we can go to basic text list boxes grid text list with details and my personal favorite wheel with details more themes will be coming down the road it's just a matter of time before we get some awesome themes for this but for the first release i think this looks really good so let's go over importing one more system then i'm going to show you how to set up your emulator for said system so from the top left hand corner import games folder for games to import mine are on my sd roms i'm just going to go with sega genesis use this folder and automatically detected it here and basically, everything's ready here for me to proceed with import. Choose OK. From the main menu, we now have our Sega Genesis section. And remember, it takes a second for everything to start downloading, but it'll automatically populate all of those for us. So we've got that ready to go. Now we want to play a game. Let's uh, just go with Three Ninjas Kick Back. If I choose this and hit play, it's going to tell me I need to configure an emulator before launching my games. Go ahead and read through everything. I'll just choose OK. Default emulator. We have a lot to choose from. Personally, I like using RetroArch Plus with Android, so I'm going to go with RetroArch Plus. The default core that I want to use is going to be the Genesis Plus GX core. You can extract the ROM archive before you start the game. Mine aren't zip, but I always leave this checked anyway. We can verify the configuration. And since I already have RetroArch Plus installed, we're almost ready to go, but since RetroArch relies on cores, we need to download the correct core. The one I chose for Sega Genesis is Genesis Plus GX. So I'm going to go back to my main menu. I'm going to find RetroArch Plus. From here, I want to go to Online Updater, Core Updater. And from here, I want to find that core I'm going to be running my Sega Genesis games with. So I'm going to scroll down here. This all works with controllers also. I'm just using the touch screen right now. We'll find Sega Genesis, Sega Genesis plus GX. Go ahead and download it. I already have the latest version, so I'm ready to go. I can go back to LaunchBox. We're going to back up. Three Ninjas kick back. I want to play. And it's going to start that game up for me with RetroArch. So yeah, I mean, it's actually really easy to set this up, and it really comes down to choosing what emulator you want to run your games with. Be it RetroArch for the lower-end stuff. For the higher-end stuff, I recommend standalone, like Dreamcast, PSP, GameCube. There's a ton of emulators available for Android, and basically all of them are supported by LaunchBox right now. So far, it's been a super smooth front-end for Android. Easy to use, it downloads all of your artwork and metadata for you automatically. It is fully supported by controllers. It'll work on your Android phone, tablet, or your Android TV. So if you want to give the free version a try, I'm leaving a link in the description. The free version does have a 100 game limit, but it'll give you an idea if this is something you want to use. Now, personally, I can't wait to see what kind of themes come out for this. If this is handled the same way as the PC version and they allow community themes, then we'll see some really awesome stuff happening on Android. Because as it goes right now, there are some other front ends available for Android, but when it comes to the theming department, a lot of the stuff is lacking. And hopefully, with some community themes, we can make this look however we want to. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Keep an eye on the channel, because if we have any major updates for this, I will do another one. But I wanted to get this out of the way, because I'm a big fan of LaunchBox on PC. And now that we have it on Android, this is probably going to be my go-to. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. 
And like always, thanks for watching.